Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Uh, as you know, um, for about six to nine months now we've had uh, two Moshix mainframes running in the cloud, accessible, publicly accessible for free to everyone. Uh, one uh, runs MBS 3.8, the venerable IBM mainframe operating system of the uh, mid 80s. And the other one runs the IBM hypervisor and time sharing interactive system VM370 from around uh, same time, maybe slightly earlier, late 70s, uh, early 80s. Uh, those two mainframes are running in the Google Cloud. Um, they, uh, they're running inside the Linux virtual machine there with, with a public IP and it's accessible to everybody who signs up uh, by going to this uh, link, moshix.dainu.net and with your browser when you're there you see some of the rules, ground rules. We can then apply by putting in your uh, real name, first and last name, your email address, what you want plan to do, your desired login ID, and this desired uh, password. And then you can choose either TSRM or VM370. And then uh, send an email and maybe after a week or so, because I travel quite a bit, whenever I get to it, I will then create the account for you. Or, and, uh, and then you get access to one of these two mainframes. So, one is TK4 um, base, which is a distribution created by this amazing uh, developer, engineer, and very nice gentleman, Jürgen Winkel Winkelman, uh, out in, Ger in Switzerland. And, uh, and that's an MVS-based uh, operating system. So it's, a, of course, mainly batch, but of course, it's also an online operating system. And so even though it is an online operating system, uh, it's really mainly meant for batch production workload when you're processing records of any type, such as uh, banks, uh, records of the bank accounts of their customers, or insurance uh, companies would process uh, records of the policies and uh, uh, the, uh, the monthly dues or uh, damage reports, etc. And then governments would process typically, let's say, tax records, etc. So this this operating system here, MBS, is mainly aimed at records processing in large amounts, and that's what uh, the follow-on versions of this MBS MBS operating system, such as uh, ZOS, still do to this day. Uh, in every large company, in every government, you will find mainframes processing large amounts of records. But then there's also the time sharing or today we will call it interactive or online operating system by IBM called VM370 and that's what we're going to be focusing today because there is a prior video that I made and Professor Arnaud from Long will shortly go into that how to get data in and out of mainframe but we've never really discussed on this channel how to get data in and out of the IBM VM370 and any follow-on products such as VM ESA and ZOS uh, and uh, ZVM any of those operating systems, how do you get data in and out of those? So uh, there's a prior video about the MBS part, but now today we're gonna look into VM370. And I'm very lucky that Professor Renu Ferland from uh, Montreal, Canada has once again agreed to make a video. Uh, he is a very experienced person as well as uh, in, in mainframe topics, but as well as also being by virtue of his profession. He's a professor at the university. He's an excellent educator, an excellent teacher. He has he has a way of explaining things in a calm, logical, rational way that's easy to follow. And I always learn something new from uh, Professor René Ferland. And today, uh, uh, René is going to show us how to get data in and out of an VM370 operating system. So uh, enough introduction for today. Over to you, René, in Montreal. Thank Hi everyone, this is René from Montreal and today I want to talk about data transfer between VM370 and the host on which VM is running. Now if you look at the videos of Moshix, you're gonna realize that Moshix already did one video like that uh, one year ago. It's a video M4 getting data in and out of the mainframe. But I think in that video, Moshix all focus mainly on MVS. I don't remember if he did something with VM370, but certainly with MVS. And I would like in this one, in this video, 
explain things for VM370. All right, so I'm gonna explain how to transfer data from the host to VM370 or from VM370 to the host. And that's what I'm gonna focus. I'm not talking about one VM370 up to another VM370 on the net or something like that. I'm not talking about transferring data from the Macintosh to some remote VM on the internet too. I'm talking, you have your VM 370 six pack one two on your PC or your Macintosh and you want to transfer data from the PC or the Mac to the VM and vice versa. And I'm going to show you how to do this almost completely only using the card reader. Because you don't need to have a very sophisticated program to transfer data between these two, especially you don't need FTP at all. Now on TK4 minus, there is some kind of FTP there. It's not really a real FTP, it's a look-alike FTP, and it's fun to use it to transfer data. There's also another program called IND file that makes it possible to transfer files between uh, the host and the MVS. But if you download VM370 six pack one two, there is no FTP there, no lookalike FTP, and there is no IND file program either. So if you want to transfer data, you need to use the card reader. Or you can also <coughs> install MeCoff and have this uh, lookalike uh, IND file if you wish, but it's a long process. And I claim that you don't really need it because with the card reader you can do most of what you want. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, <clears throat> explain myself. So let's go on VM370. So I'm gonna start an instance of VM370 six pack one two. You can see it here, six pack version one two. Let's start of course the unit record devices because we're gonna use them and now I want to transfer files okay so I'm gonna start <coughs> no, sorry a connection on CMS user so let me connect local host 3270 fine log on CMS user CMS user okay and now I want to transfer files from the Mac. This is a Mac, so I want to transfer file from my Macintosh into the CMS user virtual machine. So I'm going to use the card reader for that. Okay, so let me go here. This is the folder where uh, v the VM6 pack is located. I have several files there. <coughs> I'll come back to that. So suppose I want to create a small file which I want to transfer to VM370. So I'm going to create, I don't know, YouTube.txt. It, normally it would be a program or something like that. I'm just going to transfer a small demonstration file. <clears throat> so let's say it's uh, composed of only two records. Uh, the, oh, sorry. The next sentence is true. The previous one is false. Okay, so I want to transfer these two two lines into um, two two lines here yeah, on on VM three seventy. So <clears throat> I'm going to use the card reader for that. And at this point, it might be a the right moment to discuss the distinction between the card reader on MVS and the card reader on VM370. If you use the card reader on MVS, you can create data, set, data sets on the MVS and therefore you can transfer data. But MVS is a, an operating system and when you submit a card deck to the card reader, this deck must be a job. In other words, the data must be surrounded by some JCL 
calling some program, typically a utility, that's going to allocate the data set and transfer the data into the data set. So each time you submit a card deck to MVS, it's basically a job that you have to submit. Now, if you are looking at the card reader on VM370, this card reader is under the control of CP, the control program that runs virtual machines. Now, CP is not an operating system, and CP is not running jobs, and CP cannot allocate files and do anything like that. The only thing that CP can do with, basically the only thing that it can do with a card deck, is transfer this card deck to a virtual machine. And that's exactly what we want. We want to transfer data, and that's what CP is going to do for us. So the only thing you need to tell CP when you put a card deck into the card reader is which virtual machine this card deck should go to. So in our case, I want to send the card deck to the CMS user mach uh, virtual machine. Uh, so I'm going to use a first, the first line of my file. It's going to be what we call a user ID card. So I'm going to type user ID CMS user in capital letters, I believe is better. After that, no problem. And then <clears throat> I'm ready to transfer my data. All I have to do is initialize the card reader with this file. So devinit OOC uh, U2 and the file. And you can see that my file has been read and sent to CMS user. If I go here, I can see that I received the file like this. It's located in my in the virtual reader of the virtual machine. If I do query reader, I can see it. Now I can save this file onto the mini disk by the read card command. Read card YouTube let's say memo and then if I type YouTube memo here's my file <clears throat> so if the file was a program a Fortran program a COBOL program something like that I would have my program right in front of my nose now so it was very easy to transfer the file from the Macintosh onto my uh, VM370 Okay, so that's for Macintosh to VM370. Now, suppose I want to do the reverse. I want to take a file on VM370 and bring it on my Macintosh for some reason. Okay, usually it's going to be the other way, but let's see what happens to the... So what we're going to do is we're going to punch, we're going to punch the file. Okay, so let's take a look. I have here many, many files. <clears throat> I have this Hello COBOL here program. That's the Hello World COBOL. Let's say I want to transfer this COBOL program from VM370 to the Macintosh, okay? Or to my Macintosh here. <clears throat> How can I do that? I will punch this, this uh, file and then I'm going to copy the, the result or look at the result, okay? So, um, all right, so let's do that. <clears throat> First of all, if I want to punch something and make sure that it's going to get punched, I have to make uh, sure that the class of my punch, my virtual punch, is the same as the class of the real punch here, okay? So, uh, you have this guy here in class P, Mm -hmm. So my punch must be in class P, otherwise it won't get punched. So let me spool my punch in class P first. Okay, query you are. I can see that the punch is in class P. Everything's fine. And then I want to punch my file. Okay, so I come here. I do... Uh, what should I do? Well... Okay, I do dev init OOD hello cobol 
ASCII. And if I'm on a, on a PC, I should ask, I should add also CRLF to, to make sure that I have carriage return and line fee. And then I punch my file, punch, hello, COBOL. You can see it's been punched, that's okay. And then I reinitialize my punch over here to some other file. So maybe OOD, uh, IO, PCH, OOD, that text, ask me. Now I can take a look at my hello COBOL file. Should be there. Uh, so page hello COBOL. Now I see my program and I see also this stuff. This is the separator and this is the header. Okay, but I can delete it if I want. So I just have to edit this and delete these guys if I want. And there will be a blank line at the end. And that's it. I have my file. Okay. So this is how you can punch something. Uh, let me remove this, this guy and maybe YouTube too. Okay. Now, of course, that was a program. This is usually what you're going to transfer. Uh, if you look at what the kind of files we have here, there is a listing. It was, it's possible to, it's not possible to punch a listing because when you punch, the, the, the file must not have more than 80 columns or 80, the length of the record must not be more than 80. So there's no point in punching a listing anyway. You, what you want to do is print a listing. So there's nothing we want to, and you don't want to punch this thing to see what it is. You want to print this thing. That's what you want to do. And this module here is a executable. So it has a very long <laughs> record, as you can see, a record length. But uh, you don't want to print this or punch this because this is an executable. This is a binary data. The same is true for LO text over here. So most of what you want to to transfer from VM to the Macintosh must be text files, essentially. I mean, files containing text and usually programs for which the record format is fixed or variable, but the length is no more than 80. So that's, that's okay. Believe me, I've been using VM370 for eight years and I always punch something no more than 80 characters anyway. All right. But it could be that you want to do something with these files over here. And I'm going to show you how to, to, to punch them. Okay. Uh, what you can do. I mean, <clears throat> so I saw, I just uh, told you how to transfer from Macintosh to the VM or VM to the Macintosh. But what I explain is what to do for one file. Uh, so, Suppose you have several files you would like to uh, transfer. So maybe I have an example here. No, that's not what I, uh, yeah, there, here it is. So here, here's a bunch of PL1 programs. This, these are routines from a package called the scientific subroutine package. And there's a bunch of PL1 program. And suppose I want to install that package on VM370. I need to transfer all these files on VM370. Okay. And of course I can do it one at a time. So I open one, add a user ID card and I dev in it and I read card and I do that for all of them, but there's a lot of them. So it's a little bit tedious to do that. So how can we transfer a bunch of files from the Macintosh to VM reasonably uh, fast? That's where you think about FTP because we would do FTP and put star and everything would go. But I claim we can do something pretty good too without FTP and using only the card reader. What's the solution? Very simple. We're going to use a certain kind of archives we call VM archive or VM arc.
Now Moshix already did a, uh, a video about this. It's M67 if I'm right. Uh, let me check, 67. Working with ZVM VMark archives. Well, there are also VM370 VMark archives and we're gonna use VMark archives to transfer data. Okay, so what we need essentially to, do, to achieve that goal is a technique to create a VMark. Well, let's say I have a VMark on my Macintosh. How can I transfer it to VM370? I can do it with the card reader. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to do something, maybe. That's fine. So let's go. Uh, uh, no, not that, that thing. Let's go on the cloud system. So I need another, uh, another generic uh, 32. Let's connect on the cloud system. So that's Mushix, uh, the Dynu net. 3280. I'm going to log on onto my system, now my account, JJ, like this, fine. I'm going to create a VMark on this system, then I'm going to transfer it on my Macintosh, and then after that, I'm going to transfer it on this VM370 I have on my Macintosh, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> what kind of VMark can I create? Well, uh, remember we have this video about VSAM, and I told you there that uh, if you want to use VSAM, you can link the VSAM IO <clears throat> virtual machine, uh, Minidisc 191, where all the files, necessary files, are located. So, let's say you want to have all these files on the uh, VM370 on the Macintosh here, okay? So I want to transfer all this. So first of all, I'm going to link my VSAM IO virtual machine, 191 on 291, read, read. I'm going to access this guy, let's say on Z. Now, over there, all the files are there, okay? I want to transfer this including the text lib there and things like that. That's the beauty of MeMark because an, a VM archive can contain any CMS files, whatever nature it has, including a VMark. So let's do the VMark. Pack, that's to create a VMark. Now I have to tell which files I want to put in the VMark. So that's everything on Z and I'm going to put this into VSAMIO VMark A. And here it is. Okay. Now I have this VSAMIO VMark. It's a big file, as you can see. And the nice thing about it, as you can see, it has fixed record of length 80. That's perfect for a card reader. Hmm? So let's transfer this file back on the Macintosh. Now, exceptionally, I'm going to use IND file because this, this thing is on the, the, the internet. So I told you at the beginning of the video that I want to explain, I want to show how to transfer file between Mac and VM on the Mac without anything else than the card reader. But if you are to transfer file from the internet, you need a little bit more than that. So I'm going to transfer this right on my Macintosh using IND file. So what I have to do is this. I escape first one and then I type transfer. Uh, I want to continue. I want to receive. The file is vsamio vmark a. On the host I'm going to call it vsamio.vmark. TSO? No, that's vm. ASCII bin binary, please. That's okay, and let's transfer. Uh, 
shouldn't be very long. Good. Now I have my file. I type enter to resume session. And I'm going to log off because I don't need any more. Now uh, let's go over here. I'm going to move my Visa Mayo over here. Now you have this V mark over here. huh? Now, now I'm in the position I was talking about. I have a V mark on my Macintosh in a binary form and I want to transfer this guy into the VM370 I have here. Okay, so the, the, the trick is to remember that this is a binary file in EBCDIC and the card reader can read EBCDIC easily. So if I initialize my card reader to this file, uh, Hercules will be able to read it without any problem. That is to say, CP will be able to read it. But now, if CP has a, has a, a deck, it wants to transfer it to a card to a virtual machine, so it needs to know to which virtual machine. So we need a user ID card at the beginning. Now, previously what we did, we just open an editor and put the user ID card ourselves with the editor. But now I am on the Macintosh in ASCII, and if I try to add a user ID card to this EBCDIC file, there will be a problem, you know. So <clears throat> I cannot feed the card reader directly with this, with this file because uh, it lacks a user ID card. I need a user ID card in EBCDIC and not in a user ID card in ASCII. So I have one here. It's written CMS user IPSIDIC. I'm going to explain how to get such, an, uh, such a, a user ID card. You can see that's exactly 80 characters. So it's a card of 80 characters. And now that I have that, I can transfer this file easily on VM370. So again, I'm going to explain how to get this, uh, this uh, CMS user ID card in IPSIDIC. But for the moment, let's transfer the data, okay? So, oh, sorry, that's, <laughs> that's a reflex. So what I need to do is just definite the card reader. Let's see. First, the user ID card. Then my vSAMIO vMark. Of course, this is EBCDZIC, so I'm going to say that it is EBCDZIC. And I have two files, so I have to say multi-file and the file return and as you can see v vm or cp was able to read this without any problem and then if i go here my file was read so i do read card visamayo vmar a and here it is now if i do uh, vmar list vsamio vmark a i can see all the programs everything and i'm gonna unpack this vmark unpack vsamio vmark a and i'm gonna put this on d like this and you can see that he's unpacking the vmark and I have textlib and maclib in there. If I look at uh, D, they're all there with the proper format. And I can prove you that it's okay because let's say I do textlib map vsam io term. I can see the two entries here in the library. So that that Visamio text lib is perfectly legit. That's the same with the Mac lib. Okay. Uh, map Visamio uh, P term. These are the two copy books, remember? So, so everything on D is fine and perfectly legit and works fine. The, the COBOL program are okay, you know. Uh, not ED. So. 
I need one. Okay, KSDS RAM, for example, type KSDS RAM PL1D. Here's the program, no problem with it. Okay, HD. So that's how you can transfer a bunch of file, files from the Macintosh to VM370, provided you have a VMark. Now you may say, well, this VMark you just transferred you build on the cloud system, so that was okay. But again, suppose I'm back here, not there, but um, the other one. Uh, that, over here, and I have these files. Now, I want to transfer these. So I need to build a VMark with these. And a VMark and EPSIDIC, for that matter. But uh, I'm not on VM370. So what can I do? Well, I go on the internet because fortunately for us, there's a guy named Leland Lucius who wrote a program to create VMark on a Mac or a, v or a PC or Linux or even ZOS. So <clears throat> let's go Google first and look for VMA Utility Home Row. Let's go there. Ta-da! Now you have this VMA utility. What is it? It's a utility that allows you to list, extract, and or create VMark files. And you have a version for the Mac, for Windows, for ZOS, and you have the source so that you can probably compile on a Linux uh, instance. So I downloaded the Mac uh, version. It comes with a GUI and a a version, a command line version, and you can create very easily a VMark with that program. Okay, so let me do that. I have installed it on my Macintosh. I want to create this VMark. So I do VMA A to add, T to translate in Epsidic. Then I type the name of the VMark, SSP VMark, and then I list the files. I want to put in the VMark. That's all the file extension PL1. Ta da! It creates the, the VMark. Huh? Uh, let me say it. You can see the VMark over here. Huh? Uh, <coughs> if I go uh, over here, uh, let's say that's uh, music, I believe. Uh, where is it? Over oh, there. There, SSP, source. Here are all the files. Uh, you can see that bear over there. That's the, the, the icon of the VMark, the VMA program. If I double click on it, I have this window with all the files. And everything's fine. Okay. I can even watch, I can even look at the, uh, the Visam.io uh, program, uh, uh, not program, but uh, archive before, you know, uh, I think it's over there. You can see the Visam.io, if I double click, here it is, and if I click on this program, PL1, here it is. Uh, so I have no problem creating a VMark and examining VMarks and list and stuff like that. And if I want, I can now translate uh, transfer this VMark. So I move this guy to till VM 370, I believe. And I can transfer that, have in it, C, CMS user, SSP, IPSIDIC, uh, multi-file, and the file. Here we go. And then over here, then I read card. SSP VMark, uh, and then I do VMark unpack SSP VMark A to everything on E. And here they go. Mm -hmm. I just transfer on my instance, my VM370, the Scientific Subroutine Package, mm -hmm. all the routines at once. So that was easy, I guess. 
<coughs> as fast as an FTP or almost as fast as an FTP. Okay. So, okay. Now we have <coughs> we have uh, transfer data from the Mac to VM three seventy. That's probably the most important uh, direction. Let's say you want to do the reverse. You would like to transfer a bunch of files from VM370 on the Mac or the PC. So uh, let's say these files for, the, for that matter. Okay. So I'm going to erase, if you don't mind, uh, everything on E and everything on D, maybe. Okay, query disk. Fine. Now over there, I have two V marks. I'm going to erase them. Although I could create a VMark containing a VMark, that's possible. Let's say uh, I want to create a VMark containing all these files. So the listing, the map, the memo, everything. Of course, when uh, I will have these files on my Macintosh, the module is no use to me, but maybe the listing is, uh, will be uh, interesting to look at. And uh, this way I can transfer a file, uh, even if the record length is uh, larger than uh, 80. Okay, so let's create the VMark first. VMark, pack, everything A into, uh, let's say, YouTube. Uh, no, not, uh, yes, YouTube, uh, VMark, A. Good. And now I want to transfer that... <coughs> vmark on my macintosh i'm gonna punch it if i'm successful into transferring or punching this uh, vmark i can then use the vma program i just uh, showed you to extract the files so that's gonna be perfect for us so now i need to punch the file okay so watch how i'm gonna do this first of all if you remember when we punch this LO COBOL program, there was a header, not a header, but a separator. So I want to get rid of that separator first. So I will start my punch, OOD, no set. So now they're not going to be a separator. Then I'm going to dev in it my punch to the name of my VMark. But let's use a temporary name for the moment. So let's say temp file. And that's it. I'm not writing ASCII because I want this to be binary and EPSIDIC. And now I'm going to punch my VMark. Punch uh, YouTube VMark 8 without a header. Okay. Fine. Then it says start for output, so let's start OOD and let's divin it again, this guy, to another file. <coughs> Sorry. And let's go back here uh, where we have this uh, temp file. Okay, we should have it now. Okay, that's, that's okay. Uh, now, what happened with this temp file? Okay, uh, let me take a look at this YouTube VMark. Tube VMark. Now, how many records do we have? We have 175 records of length 80. So, how, how big is it? Hmm? PC, 175, 80. So that should be uh, uh, 14,000. 14, but if we look at the, uh, the um, temp file we punch, uh, let's see what we do, temp file. Uh, what we have is four, 14,160. So we have two records more uh, two records of 80 uh, characters more than what we should actually we have uh, that's normal because in this temp file what we have is let, let's take a look i would be i'm gonna 
take an up tool dump in hexadecimal, uh, temp file. Let's do more. What I the, the these first five lines here. That's the that's a user ID card actually. That's not part of the VMARP. It's a user ID card. Okay, that's one of the two records more, and the other one is at the end of the file. And if I do this, you can see that the last five here. Okay, these are blanks, so it's a blank card. So I guess in the 60s, uh, not the 60s, but the 70s, it was easy to punch such a VMARC or at least uh, some kind of EPSIDIC file. And you had this user ID card at the beginning and the blank card at the end. And you could remove that and change it for whatever you want. That was okay. But now we need to remove this on the Macintosh or on the PC. So whatever method you you can imagine is good i myself wrote my uh, small c program to do that i call it uh, vtrim so i just do vtrim i take this temp file and i put on youtube vmark now if you look at this guy <laughs> youtube vmark now i have the right number of a character that's exactly 175 uh, and if I have records if I go uh, here I can take a look at this uh, YouTube VMart and I see my CMS lib map my hello listing I can look at the listing here uh, that's good that's fine uh, the <clears throat> profile exec of a CMS user. Here it is. And suppose now I want to extract this. Well, I use VMA again. Extract, translate, YouTube. Here they are. And I can take a look. For example, uh, I don't know more. Hello. Sorry. Hello. Cobol. Here it is, with no uh, header and anything, that's fine. And the profile exec, if I want to look at it, here it is. Of course, I have also these, uh, this module, doesn't mean anything here. I have this text file, doesn't mean anything here. Uh, maybe if I look at it, I'm curious. Let me take a look at this text file. Uh, binary see it anyway yes let's see yeah that, it's okay it's a it's one with the proper that's fine okay but anyway it doesn't mean anything on the macintosh but it's okay <laughs> all right <clears throat> so uh let me remove all these files so as you can see now i was able to take a bunch of files on vm370 i punched them i First, I create a VMark with it. I punch the VMark, trim it, and then I extract it with VMA. Actually, uh, if I change the name, let's say if I take this temp file and I do something like this. Uh, well, okay. Well, that's fine. I thought it would be possible for it to see it, but anyway. I think it, it should work. It still work, as you can see. So even though there is a user ID card at the beginning and a blank card at the end, the, the VMA utility will be able to understand it anyway. So if it's just about transferring data and extract it, it should work. Well, the reason why I trim this uh, VMark is because if you want to transfer this VMark to another system and use vmark on some vm remote vm then the, the user id card will be in the in the in the way and the last card also so <clears throat> so it's probably better if you trim this uh, this uh, vmark file anyway and it's not that hard to to do it so uh, let's remove this temp and 
well, why not all the all the V marks for that matter? You know. All right. Now, one last thing is to create that CMS user ID IPSIDIC card. Well, that's very easy. Uh, you just create one on VM370. Uh, let me go back. And you punch it, huh? like, uh, like I did. Uh, so, I don't know. Let's create uh, CMS user ABC tick. Uh, input. The user ID, CMS user, file, uh, good. Now I do the same as I did before. So I start OOD no set. I dev in it OOD to what I want. Let's say TMP file. And then I punch. Uh, CMS user ABC dick A without a header. Good. Then I start OOD again. Then I reinitialize it something else. And then I should have a temp file. Okay, let me remove that CMS user ID. Now you can see the temp file is 240 characters, so that's three times 80. So we have to trim this vtrim temp file, and then let's put it in CMS user abc dick. Now that CMS user abc dick is there with 80 character, and if I do an actual dump. CMS. I can see <clears throat> U S E R I D blank C M S U S E R. So that's really the user ID card in Epsidic. That's fine. And you can create as many <laughs> user ID cards as you wish this way. So that's fine. Okay, so I guess this is uh, this is it. I wanted to show you how to transfer files from the host to VM370, and provided you have this utility, this wonderful utility called VMA, which is available on the Mac, on the PC, on Linux, on ZOS, uh, you can <coughs> transfer files easily because you can create files and examine files and extract. Mark on your platform so that uh, either you create them to transfer them to VM370 or you take them from VM370 and you extract what's in it to uh, <clears throat> get the files you want on the host. So this way I think you can transfer almost anything because remember on a, in a VMark file you can put any any kind of CMS file. So it can be modules, it can be text file, it can be programs, it can be libraries, it can be even a VMR. So if you are to create something on VM370 with all kinds of stuff, you can create a big VMR for it. And then when you have it binary on your host, you can use it on another system, send it by email, transfer it by FTP to a modern ZVM, whatever. No problem. And probably, I tried it many times, if you download the VMark from the internet binary, most probably you can transfer it without any problems. I did it several times. I'm not going to say that it works always, 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 but I know that I did it many, many times without any problems. You know, I just download it and transfer it the way I showed you, and it just unpacked fine on my system. Okay? So that's it. See you next time. Thank you, Rene. This was most interesting. As usual, I've learned a couple of tricks more from you. And uh, thank you for explaining things so calmly and so logically. It's very easy to follow. As you can see here on the Moshix uh, VM370 mainframe in the cloud, if you connect to moshix.dino.net with port 3280, and if, of course, you ask for an account beforehand, and log in, you will see that VMark is already installed. So. 
as uh, as Professor Nevelon showed us, uh, it works beautifully on VM370, and you should, of course, use it the way that he described it. And of course, int file, so file upload, uh, send to host, of course, also still works uh, on the Moshix uh, VM370 mainframe, as well as other means uh, through uh, card reader and tape. All those means work just as in the real mainframe, and. Um, and so I hope you all were able to follow and learned a couple of things just like I did. Thank you, Renee, for making this video uh, once again. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the Moshix Mainframe channel yet, this would be a great time to do it. If you have any comments, please post them uh, in, the, in the section below this video, in the comment section. You will see that all the other previous videos have very lively discussions where people help each other. And of course, uh, uh, Renee and myself are going to be very... Uh, forthcoming in helping any way we can and uh, and uh, if you like this particular video please press on the thumbs up button for Rene and uh, see you soon again on the Moshix mainframe channel thank you and goodbye